G'day. This video nearly ended in disaster. Uh, I've been wanting to do some differential indexing for some time and finally got myself organised enough to do it. Uh, it requires changing the mill over to a horizontal configuration and a few other bolts and sods, so it's not something that is just a, oh, I've got a spare five minutes, off I go. Uh, to make this gear, I've been at it probably since about, oh, for the last three, four hours. So, you know, it takes time because you're cutting each uh, gullet between the teeth individually. The first time I did it, I got that, and that looks all right, except for just there, I've got half a tooth. And I went back and checked a whole bunch of things, and what it turned out was that, although I've got a slot for a key here, I didn't put a key in. And because this is a large gear, and it's a pretty deep depth of cut for the cutter, uh, what happens is that it would just it just vibrated around just that fraction so that by the time I got right round it's a little bit more than half a tooth um, but you know that's what happens if you if you have, your setup isn't quite right so you know rule today a uh, rule from now on always use a key we'll run through differential indexing and how that works and then uh, show you the result for those interested this is the uh, the first outing of boom cam so we'll see how this works um, it's not too bad it's got a few things that I have to work out, but it's okay. There are four types of dividing which are commonly talked about, or rather there are three types that are commonly talked about and one that's thrown in as, a, as an occasional reference. First type of dividing is, is called direct indexing. Around the front here there are 24 holes, uh, and there's a plunger that can go in and locate in those holes, and so you can get 24 divisions. If you're just after doing something like putting some flats on a bit of round bar or something like that, that's perfectly adequate. One of the problems with it is if those holes aren't accurately positioned, the position of the, of the chuck won't be. So that's direct indexing. And then there's what you'd call normal indexing using the indexing wheels here. Now, because it's got a 40 to one ratio, if this hole isn't quite in the right spot, the error is actually divided by 40. So provided that these are not that hasn't been drilled with respect to that one, that hasn't been drilled with respect to that one, and so on and so on and so on, you're generally pretty right. It'll give you an accurate set of holes, or whatever you're using the positioning for. On a normal dividing head, this is limited to up to about uh, 50 divisions, and then after 50 divisions, there, you start getting things dropping out because they're prime numbers and all that sort of thing. So one way around that is a thing called differential indexing. And what that's doing is it's using feedback basically from the spindle of the dividing head and putting it back into the position of the, of the wheel. And to do that, you use a, a shaft. Um, this is a homemade job, but like this. And that goes in the back of the spindle. And then I have gears running from here, round here to drive that. Now normally when I'm helical milling that's being driven by the table but with with the differential indexing it, it comes here. Uh, there's another sort of index and I can't even remember the name of it but it's talked about occasionally and it's a bit it's a bit of an awkward one. What they suggest you do is oh yes you index around say three holes on this plate and then you swap that plate for another plate and you index another five holes on that and that'll get to your division. As you can imagine, that's very messy and leads to uh, and can lead to all sorts of errors. So most people don't bother with that. So in reality, if you want to do a prime number on a, on a, uh, a dividing head, you've got to have um, a universal dividing head. One possibility too, I mean, that, that'll work for a straight spur gear, but it won't work for a helical gear. So if I wanted a helical gear with 125, 127 teeth, for example, what I would have to do is set this up for 127 teeth, make up a ring which had 127 holes on it, then mount that on here and use that for direct indexing. Because if this is being used for differential indexing, I can't obviously use it for helical milling. I've now set up my gear train and my plates for doing my 77 tooth gear. Now, according to the chart, I need to go 10 divisions on the on the 20 hole line. Um, without all this, that's that's what you do for an 80 tooth gear. So this is actually sub subtracting a little bit back. But what happens if you if you watch carefully with the, the, the holes here, if I go a half a revolution, 
right? And this is actually moving because of this gear train here and so it, it sort of gives a bit of a feedback loop that means that you're, you're not moving quite 10 holes you're actually moving nine and a half or whatever the, the, the story may be um, or whatever the fraction is uh, and that's and that's differential indexing okay so that's basically what it is so I'll now set up the rest of the the, the gear cutting stuff and cut a cut a 70 seven tooth gear this is the drivetrain to get the the 77 tooth gear uh, there's a 48 I think it is here and a 32 uh, the 40 is just an idler and you can see as I rotate the crank that's slowly moving and feeding back into there to, to change the position of the dividing plate where do you get these ratios from, gear ratios from? Well, if you buy a dividing head new, you should get something like this with it. Uh, fortunately, it's also available on the web. So this one here, which was a sort of a second-hand salvage arrangement, uh, I was able to find some instructions. I think what's happened over the years is they've all been copied from each other. And so um, typos and things have crept in. So for example, up here uh, for the 24 teeth, uh, it's a 33 tooth wheel, but it should be 22 on 33 rather than, uh, I think it was 33 on 22 or something like that. For 77, it's 48 and 32 with a 40 idler, and there's a, usually a diagram attached here. So 48, the 32 goes on there, but in this particular case, that should be labelled as a B rather than a D. Um, so they've, they've mucked that one up, but you know it's a matter of working with ease and, and, and working out uh, you know what it needs to be. Normally at this part of the video I declare victory over the forces of, of well, non machininess or something like that and uh, produce this you know, wonderful part. However, in this case I can't do that. I screwed up. If you look carefully there, you'll see that instead of 77 teeth, I've got 76 and a half teeth. In fact, not even a half. But that's what's happened. Now, I'll stay from the outset. It's nothing to do with the, the differential indexing. What happened here was that, although I've cut a keyway here, I didn't bother putting a key on my mandrel. 
Uh, over the years I've had several people, oh no, no, cutting spur gears, you don't need to put a key in. Normally I do, but I thought, oh well, you know, maybe they're right. And uh, unfortunately I picked the wrong gear to experiment on. So next time I'll have a key on that to lock that into the shaft and keep that where it should be. Um, you know, that's only, what, half a, half a tooth over 76, and so, uh, 77, so, you know, the amount that that moved uh, on the mandrel is very slight, but it was enough to, to throw things out. So there's a lesson in that for me, and hopefully in that for you too. On my second attempt, I've nailed the 77 tooth gear. Uh, it was a little bit nerve wracking coming out to the last bit because when you're cutting gears, that last tooth or so, you're never quite sure whether you've got enough room there or not. It's a bit, a bit of one of those optical um, tricks almost. But uh, now we've got seven. The way I do this is I, I start, when I start off, the first gash I make, the first cut I make, I mark a zero. And then I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on around. So I can keep a running tally that way. So when this one's slotted in, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's there. So that's, that's my 77 tooth gear. So uh, this time I had a key locking that in. Uh, the first time I didn't, and that's why I got the half tooth. And halfway through, I noticed this was ringing a little bit, and I looked, and the nut on the on the mandrel had shaken loose. So that can happen. So you know, from now on, um, I'm going to be putting keys in these things, uh, particularly for larger gears. For smaller gears, it may not matter quite so much, but for these ones with uh, a deep cut on them, uh, keys essential, I think. Anyway, so there's a, there's differential indexing. Thanks for watching and see you for the next one.